Welcome to the ultimate dive experience. You are about to embark on one of the greatest adventures of your life. Becoming a scuba diver marks the first step in a journey that will forever change the way you experience the world. Few of us will ever become astronauts and explore outer space. But you can explore and experience the wonder of feeling weightless. Interaction with incredible marine life and the exploration of wrecks. Only open to those who become divers. Seventy-five percent of our planet is water. Becoming certified is a license to learn about these waters that are our last frontiers. Your SSI internationally recognized certification is your ticket to dive our last true unexplored frontier, the oceans. When you become a diver, you must bring your life support with you. To safely explore the underwater world, you not only need a personally fitted, high quality life support system, you need the knowledge and skills necessary to safely use that equipment. At SSI, our goal is that you don't just learn to dive, but also become a diver. To do that, we believe it takes four ingredients for you to become a diver. We call this the Diver Diamond. Knowledge, skills, equipment, experience. While training develops knowledge and skills, the only way to get experience is to go diving. This is why SSI encourages more open water dives during training instead of just the minimum number of dives as required by industry standards. The more you dive, the more you will enjoy the sport. Your diving opportunities are limited only by your imagination and your physical capabilities. Your diving adventures can take you to the most spectacular places in the world. You can dive reefs and walls, explore wrecks, dive beneath the ice and closely observe marine life, both large and small. And with your underwater still or video camera, you can bring back exciting images to remember for a lifetime. Once you have completed all the requirements to earn your open water certification, you will have earned your license to learn more. Your ticket to continue your diving education and travel personally and professionally as far as you want to go. Congratulations on your decision to become a certified scuba diver. The SSI family shares your excitement of exploring our underwater world. Welcome. Advances in equipment and training techniques have come a long way since the beginning of recreational scuba diving in the 1950s. So far, in fact, that almost anyone who is comfortable in the water can enjoy the spectacle of the underwater world. But this does not relieve divers of certain responsibilities with regards to your body and the aquatic environment. When scuba diving, you're not only experiencing a new set of sensations, you are also subjecting yourself to the physical laws that affect your body. The most important of these laws deal with the increased pressure of the aquatic environment. For example, right now you may not be aware of the air pressure surrounding your body because it is evenly applied in all directions. However, when you go underwater, the weight of the water will become obvious. A liter of seawater weighs about 1.03 kilograms, or 64 pounds per cubic foot. 
Fresh water weighs one kilogram per liter, or 62.5 pounds per cubic foot, approximately 800 times heavier than air. Air pressure is defined as force per unit area and is commonly expressed in bar in the metric system, and pounds per square inch, PSI, and atmospheres in the imperial system. For each additional 10 meters or 33 feet of descent, another bar or atmosphere of pressure is added to the pressure on your body. While our bodies are primarily liquid, approximately 70% by volume, the liquid portions of the body are considered to be incompressible for recreational divers. However, the other 30% of our body is air and will compress and expand when the pressure changes. The most important law you will learn in diving is Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law states, if the temperature remains constant, the volume of a gas will vary inversely as the absolute pressure and the density will vary directly. Or more simply stated, as pressure increases, volume decreases, and as pressure decreases, volume increases. As a diver, it is important to note that the greatest relative volume change takes place in the first 10 meters, or 33 feet. This emphasizes your need to respond to pressure increases immediately underwater. Your body air spaces will compress upon descent, and unless you introduce more air into those air spaces, you could experience pain. For example, have you ever descended to the deep end of a swimming pool and noticed it hurt your ears? Your ears are one of those body air spaces that you will learn how to equalize. This increasing pressure is referred to as squeeze. Ear squeeze is the most common and also the easiest to prevent. Pain is the primary symptom when the eardrum and its connective tissue are under stress and this pain should never be ignored. Pain is an indication that some tissue damage may already be taking place. As you descend underwater, you will feel external pressure pressing on the tympanic membrane, pushing the eardrum inward. To equalize this increasing pressure, you simply need to introduce air into the middle ear through the eustachian tube. The secret to equalization is to never wait for the pain to begin and equalize often. Prevention of ear squeeze is easy. To perform the Valsava technique, pinch your nostrils closed and blow gently into your nose until the pressure is equalized. Do not blow too hard or try to force air into the middle ear. The Valsava technique should be used very carefully with practice only after yawning, swallowing, and jaw rotating do not work. A properly fitted mask will form an almost rigid airspace around your nose and eyes. Like with all squeezes, as you descend, pressure increases and volume decreases, pressing your mask tighter against your face. To relieve the pressure, simply exhale through your nose and the mask will be equalized. Suit squeeze is only a potential problem when wearing a dry suit. Dry suits are exactly what they state, dry. But in order to stay dry, you have to have air between you and the suit. Like with every squeeze, as you descend, pressure increases and volume decreases and the dry suit compresses, creating ridges or folds pinching the skin, causing the surface capillaries to rupture. Like all squeezes, to prevent suit squeeze, simply add air to your dry suit on descent to equalize the increasing pressure. Now, we will move to a discussion about the diving equipment. The safest way for you to learn to dive and become a diver is in your own personal fitted, high quality, total diving system. The total diving system is made up of six subsystems. In this section, we are going to talk about the snorkeling system and the exposure system. The snorkeling system contains the mask, snorkel, fins, 
exposure suit, booties, and mesh equipment bag. Dive mask. Because the human eye is designed to function in air, not water, we must bring a pocket of air with us underwater in order for us to see comfortably. Your dive mask is the first component of the snorkeling system and your window to the underwater world. It gives you clear vision underwater, protects your face and eyes from irritants in the water, keeps water out of your nose and gives you some protection from cold water. There are many types of masks available, but all perform the same basic function and the most important consideration for your mask is fit. Selecting the right mask requires the assistance of your SSI dive professional. The mask will be fitted to the contours of your face. A double seal along the mask edge is very effective in keeping water out. Flexible mask straps or comfort straps secure the mask to your face. The lenses of your mask should be tempered glass to resist scratching and breaking. If you really want to enjoy every dive and not miss anything, don't forget to talk to your dive professional about a protective mask box, mask cleaner and defog. You'll be glad you did. Snorkel. The next piece of the snorkeling system is the snorkel. Snorkels let us maneuver on the surface with little effort and let us breathe without lifting our heads out of the water. As part of the total diving system, the snorkel can help in the case of a surface swim with all of your equipment. For unrestricted breathing and easy clearing, a snorkel should have smooth internal construction with a large bore and self-draining vent, be made of relatively flexible material, and have a comfortable mouthpiece. The snorkel is attached to the left side of the mask. When using your snorkel, it should point straight up when you are looking down. This position provides the diver with a relaxed and constant view of the beauty below and easy breathing. Scuba fins. Unlike swimmers, snorkelers and scuba divers do not use their arms for propulsion. Scuba fins provide 100% of your propulsion. Scuba fins allow you to move through the water with a minimum amount of effort substantially increasing the power of the bare foot. There are two types of scuba fins, full foot and open heel. Full foot fins are designed for warm water and are generally worn without scuba boots. Open heel fins are designed to be worn with scuba boots and used in all types of diving. The open heel model is adjustable for close, comfortable fit. Fins that are too tight will cause cramping and loose-fitting fins may cause blisters or fall off while kicking. Your SSI dive professional will work with you and make sure you get the best fin for the type of diving you will be doing. Okay. The second component of the total diving system is the exposure system. On land, you wear layers of clothing to protect you from heat loss. When you go underwater, it's important to wear the same type of protection. The reason is you lose body heat 25 times faster underwater than you do in air. And as you will learn in section four, it's important to stay warm throughout your dives. Exposure suits are known as wetsuits, dry suits, dive skins, and rash guards. These garments are made from a variety of materials that are designed to protect the diver in all ranges of water temperature. The most important feature in an exposure suit is proper fit. Your suit should fit like a second skin, long enough in the arms, legs, and body. Ask your SSI dive professional to show you the different options for the type of diving you will be doing. Gloves or mitts are how you protect your hands against the cold and injury. In cold water, gloves ensure the manual dexterity needed to operate your diving equipment and protect the diver's hands from abrasion or irritants in the water. 
There are different types and thicknesses designed for a variety of diving conditions. However, gloves or mitts are not an invitation to touch marine life and coral underwater. Hood. A hood can also be added for extra warmth. The greatest heat loss areas are your head, torso, underarms, and groin. So, by adding protection in these areas, body warmth can be maintained. Safety flag and float. Some countries and states have laws that require divers to mark their position underwater with a float and dive flag. The diving flag signals to coming boats, diver down, keep clear, cut down your speed. The flag should be displayed only when divers are actually in the water. Check with your SSI dive professional for the rules that apply to dive floats and flags in your area. Mesh bag. You're probably wondering how you're going to transport this equipment to and from the dive site. The best bag for the actual dive site is a mesh bag. Not only does it hold all of your equipment, it also makes it easy to rinse it after diving and allows it to breathe and dry. Maintaining your equipment is important. After every dive, thoroughly rinse your equipment with fresh water and allow it to dry in a cool, well-ventilated area out of direct sunlight. Store your equipment in a cool, dry place and never in extreme heat or cold. If you want to learn more about taking care of your equipment, ask your SSI dive professional about the SSI Equipment Techniques course. The aquatic environment is a beautiful and exciting place. The techniques you will learn to maneuver and remain safe and comfortable underwater will be different than you have ever known. When you swim today, you use all limbs for forward motion. Once you become a diver, you will become part of the environment with your arms to your sides, allowing your fins to do all the work. This streamlined posture will let you glide effortlessly through the water. Add a mask and snorkel and you will become one with the water. With your face submerged, all the air you will need will come through your snorkel. Vision underwater changes in unique ways. There is an interesting optical illusion called refraction. Light rays bend as they pass from air through water and magnify objects by about one-third. This means that an object one meter or three feet away will appear closer and fish will appear larger. Additionally, the deeper you dive, the warm colors red, orange, and yellow will virtually disappear, and your eyes will only see blues and purples. This is called absorption. Many variables will affect visibility underwater. Refraction, illumination, absorption, diffusion, and turbidity. All of these factors can make the same dive site look very different throughout the day. Depending on where you dive, water temperatures can range from around 0 degrees Celsius or 30 degrees Fahrenheit to over 30 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. You may even encounter a temperature difference of 10 to 15 degrees Celsius or 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit between the surface and depth. This change in temperature is called a thermocline. Your SSI dive professional will share more information with you regarding thermoclines. Sound also behaves very differently underwater. Sound travels four times faster underwater and seems to come from all directions. Since we cannot talk underwater, we need to communicate by using hand signals. Pictured here are the most commonly used hand signals. Okay, question and answer. Something is not okay. Go up. Go down. Stop. I am low on air. 
please review these hand signals before heading to the pool or view them on SSI's free smartphone app. We've covered many topics in this section. Remember, knowledge replaces fears and fantasies with correct information. On your journey to becoming a diver, you may have a small amount of anxiety when it comes to breathing underwater. But breathing underwater is as easy as breathing on the surface. The only difference is the gas you breathe underwater is delivered through a regulator, which is only one part of the air delivery system. Now that you understand pressure, this piece of equipment automatically regulates your cylinder pressure to ambient surrounding pressure. Through your air delivery system, you can breathe underwater easily and effortlessly. Yes, the excitement of being underwater for the first time might increase your breathing rate. But once you are comfortable underwater, you will gain control over your breathing rate and master a slow, relaxed breathing pattern. The most efficient breathing pattern for scuba diving is a deep inhalation followed by a balanced exhalation. Deep, balanced and rhythmic. The key is to relax and realize that your breathing patterns will automatically become more regular with experience. You will also discover that the proper swimming position, also referred to as attitude, is 15 to 20 degrees. This attitude allows your mouth and lungs to be horizontal and is the optimal swimming position for breathing easy at depth. Your regulator will provide you with a sufficient amount of air at ambient pressure. In other words, the sufficient amount of gas at depth is determined by environmental conditions, the amount of work you do underwater, and your physical condition. Air consumption also increases in direct proportion to the depth you are diving. The deeper you go, the more gas you use. For example, a diver at 2 bar or atmospheres absolute pressure in 10 meters or 33 feet uses twice as much air as a diver on the surface. A diver at 5 bar or atmospheres pressure in 40 meters or 130 feet uses five times as much air as a person on the surface. In addition, a diver sharing air with another diver can increase air consumption by a factor of two or more. The selection of your regulator, one that will serve you in all diving conditions, is the single most important decision you'll make in the purchase of your air delivery system. Your SSI dive professional will help you with this important decision. Air is roughly 21% oxygen, which we all need for survival, and 79% nitrogen. We cannot breathe pure oxygen underwater, and you'll find out later in this program that nitrogen is actually our limiting factor to depth and time. Just like there have been advances in equipment, there have also been advances in training. Ask your SSI dive professional about taking the SSI Enriched Air Nitrox Specialty Program. The first rule of scuba diving is breathe continuously. While you are on scuba, you must breathe continuously in and out in a rhythmic pattern. If your regulator is out of your mouth at depth for any reason, you should always exhale a small stream of bubbles. The second rule of scuba diving is ascend slowly and maintain control. The best way to control your ascent is by watching your dive computer. Never exceed an ascent rate of 10 meters or 30 feet per minute. Most dive computers have an ascent alarm to tell you when you are ascending too fast. The third rule of scuba diving, regain control, respond, react, which you need when responding to difficult situations. 
Regain control. Regain the capacity to think and make rational judgments. Respond. Consider the possible responses. React. Choose the proper response and act decisively. When diving, you must remain under control at all times. The breathing apparatus is called the air delivery system, which includes the first and second stage regulators, alternate air source, and a high pressure scuba cylinder. The first stage. This takes high pressure air in the cylinder and decreases the pressure to approximately 10 bar or 140 psi. The second stage. Your mouthpiece takes the air from the first stage at 10 bar or 140 psi and decreases it to ambient pressure, which is whatever you need for your current depth. After diving, and especially after diving in salt water, rinse your air delivery system and all your diving equipment in fresh water. Don't press the purge button while rinsing the second stages unless the air delivery system is still attached to a cylinder and the air is on. Salt buildup can affect your air delivery regulator's operation. When properly maintained, your total diving system and your air delivery system is like a reliable buddy. Scuba diving equipment is life support equipment. The SSI Equipment Service Program is designed to keep your life support equipment properly maintained. Nothing is more disappointing than to arrive at a diving destination and find out that you have a minor equipment problem. Another important part of your total diving system is a specific spare parts kit. Your SSI dive center or resort can help you assemble all the necessary pieces you need for minor field maintenance. If you want to learn more about your equipment, ask your SSI dive professional about the SSI Equipment Techniques program. Diving cylinders are available in many sizes and are made from either steel or aluminum with varying pressure ratings and capacities. Your SSI dive professional will help you decide which cylinder size is best for your height, strength and air consumption. All diving cylinders have markings at the neck of the cylinder that describes the material, date the cylinder was manufactured, size and pressure. It is important to understand cylinder marking codes so you will know the proper pressure and capacity of your diving cylinder. The markings on older or specialty cylinders may vary and your SSI dive professional can help you understand any special markings. The most important part of caring for your cylinder is keeping moisture out. To do that, simply keep a minimum cylinder pressure at all times. Store the cylinder in a cool, dry place. When transporting a cylinder, position it with the bottom of the cylinder forward. Secure the cylinder so it cannot roll around. Maintaining body temperature in water is a serious factor while diving. While air is an excellent insulator for blocking heat transmission, water is an excellent conductor. Water absorbs body heat 25 times faster than air. The body's primary responsibility is to keep the brain and torso warm. If the body can no longer do that, a phenomenon called blood shunting occurs, slowing circulation to the outer extremities of the body. And while that may be fine on the surface, that is not good underwater. So, how do we solve the issue? The answer is thickness, fit, and seam integrity. Thickness solves conduction. Fit and seam integrity solves convection. Then it's all about layering. That can be a rash guard, lightweight fleece, wetsuit in all thicknesses, or even a dry suit. It will largely depend on the type of diving you will be doing. 
wetsuits are also buoyant and require you to wear just enough weight to offset this buoyancy. But let's not forget that as depth increases, so does pressure, and that will happen to closed nitrogen cells. They will compress. This is why you wear a buoyancy compensator to make descending, swimming at the proper attitude or position at depth, ascending and surface flotation easy. After diving, soak your exposure suit with wetsuit shampoo. Rinse thoroughly and hang to dry. Never store your suit folded or compressed. It could become permanently creased and create cold spots where the bubbles break down. Hang the suit on a wetsuit hanger and store in a cool, dry place. Dry suits are used for cool to cold water conditions. Air instead of water is filled in a dry suit by an inflation valve, which is connected with your regulator's first stage by an inflator hose. Air is introduced into the suit for thermal protection and to prevent suit squeeze. On ascent, air in the suit must be allowed to escape through an exhaust valve. Diving in a dry suit is very different from diving in a wetsuit. If dry suit diving sounds like something you want to try, ask your SSI dive professional about the dry suit specialty program. Proper buoyancy control makes the difference between an enjoyable, effortless dive and an uncomfortable, potentially dangerous situation in open water. Many serious diving problems have been linked to inadequate buoyancy control. Buoyancy is the characteristic of a fluid to push up on an object immersed in it. There are three types of buoyancy that can describe an object immersed in a liquid. Positive, negative, and neutral. Positive buoyancy. An object less dense than the liquid will float. For example, any object weighing less than 1.03 kilograms per liter or 64 pounds per cubic foot floats in salt water. Negative buoyancy. An object with greater density than the liquid will sink. For example, any object weighing more than 1.03 kilograms per liter or 64 pounds per cubic foot will sink. Neutral buoyancy. An object with density equal to the density of the liquid will neither sink nor float. For example, an object weighing 1.03 kilograms per liter or 64 pounds per cubic foot will remain neither sinking nor floating. To compensate for positive buoyancy of the diver and the exposure suit, a diver needs a weight to descend. The weight belt or weight pockets are designed to easily disengage in case of emergency. Weights, and only in the amount needed by a diver, are threaded and balanced onto a traditional right-hand release weight belt. If needed, the weight belt is easily released, held away from the body and dropped. With weight integrated buoyancy compensators, the weights are evenly balanced in weight pockets attached to the BC. If needed, a quick release is pulled and the weights fall. It is important for your safety and comfort, as well as for the environment, that you are not overweighted. Proper buoyancy control is the best possible environmental protection every diver can perform. Your SSI dive professional will work with you to achieve proper weighting and buoyancy control. If you want to learn more about conserving energy and improving air consumption, look into the perfect buoyancy specialty program to get some advanced training. The BC provides you with surface flotation and is used to control your ascents and descents. You can easily control your descent by letting air out of your BC slowly. As you descend, the suit will compress and you simply add small amounts of air to your BC to remain neutral throughout the dive. Neutral buoyancy also allows you to ascend effortlessly. You just have to remember, as pressure decreases, what happens? Volume increases. 
you will need to control your ascent to the surface by purging air from your BC. Remember, the greatest relative change takes place at the last 10 meters or 33 feet. Your dive computer will monitor your ascent rate and safety stop. Once you reach the surface, simply fill your BC for positive buoyancy. After a dive, open your BC or inflation valve and run water into the bladder. Note, if it's weight integrated, take the weights out before washing. Tilt the BC upside down to make sure the water goes throughout the device. Then, turn the device down, open it and drain the rinse water. Dry and store your device by filling it one-third full of air and placing it in a cool, dry place. The last component of the total diving system is the information system. The information system is designed to easily prepare and follow a dive plan. Dive computer, SSI dive tables, SSI total dive log. Here's how all these components work together. We live in a computer world and recreational diving is no different. Dive computers are automatically activated in the water and immediately start recording information. Depth, time, air pressure, temperature, and time remaining underwater based on your air consumption. Once on the surface, the dive computer also calculates your time out of the water to determine how long you need to remain on the surface before your next dive. There are many computers available for various types of diving. If you plan on taking an SSI Enriched Air Nitrox specialty, you may want to consider a Nitrox programmable computer. Likewise, if you plan on taking the SSI Navigation specialty, you may want to consider a computer with an integrated compass. The SSI Total Dive Log is a permanent record of your certification information and individual diving data beginning with your classroom, pool and open water training dives. It is important not only to evaluate your skills, but to keep up with your diving experience. The SSI Total Dive Log has a place for equipment and maintenance records, as well as health and medical information. SSI Total Dive Log is designed to add additional pages as needed. The dive light is just another example of something that is very useful on any dive. An artificial light allows you to see the real color of soft and hard corals, even at depth. So, a dive light can be used for several purposes. Day diving, night or limited visibility diving, or exploring wrecks. It's always a good idea to carry what we call the save kit You don't want to have spent a lot of money on a vacation and then have something minor spoil a dive. These are some of the things you might want to take with you. An extra mask, O-rings, extra mask strap, anti-fog solution, lens cleaner, extra mouthpieces, wire ties, batteries, light bulbs, and maybe even a multi-purpose tool. For a more complete list, look in your SSI Total Dive Log. Diving is all about comfort and confidence. As you can now see, equipment plays an important role in your safety underwater. This is why there is a difference in learning to dive and becoming a diver. The diver that makes an investment in his or her equipment is a committed diver. If this is you, SSI recommends that you purchase your own personally fitted, high quality, total diving system and use it in training. You will be much more comfortable when you do your open water dives. Your SSI dive center and dive professional are the experts. Consult them anytime you have questions.
Pressure injuries on ascent are some of the most serious in diving, and yet the easiest to prevent. These injuries are usually sustained by poorly trained divers or because of neglected or inadequate equipment. Let's look at how the four ingredients of the SSI Diver Diamond, proper knowledge, skills, equipment, and experience work together to prevent these injuries. Pressure injuries are easily prevented by learning effective breathing patterns, knowing your physical condition and your physical limitations, understanding how injuries occur and how they can be prevented, proper dive planning and diving technique, and maintaining and properly using your total diving system. Lung structure. The first thing you need to understand is the function of your lungs. Your lungs are made up of approximately 300 million alveoli that are arranged in grape-like structures at the end of our bronchial trees. Right now, every time you take a breath, the air is rich in oxygen and passes through the lungs via the alveoli into the veins and arteries to carry oxygen-rich blood to your body. If this kind of information intrigues you, ask your SSI dive professional about the Science of Diving Specialty Program. This program covers all aspects of diving physics, physiology, decompression theory, advanced equipment techniques, and the underwater environment. In Section 1, we discussed Boyle's Law in terms of increasing pressure to describe squeeze and how injuries can occur on descent. As a reminder, Boyle's Law states as pressure increases, volume decreases. As pressure decreases, volume increases. Now, we are going to discuss how Boyle's Law works in the opposite direction. Just as we learned to equalize pressure, we are going to do the same with regards to breathing compressed air under pressure. A person's natural instinct, if they run out of air on a dive, would be to simply hold their breath and ascend. For example, if an untrained scuba diver were to dive to just 10 meters or 33 feet deep at two bar or atmospheres, fill the lungs with about five liters or 10 pints of air and ascend to the surface at one bar or atmosphere without exhaling, the air in the lungs would expand to fill a volume of 10 liters or 20 pints, or two times the normal lung volume. As you can imagine, this is impossible and their lungs would be damaged. This is why any person, before attempting to dive, should become certified. Your SSI dive professional will teach you how easily it is to prevent any overexpansion injuries. All overexpansion injuries are easy to prevent. Breathe continuously. It is absolutely necessary to maintain a continuous, balanced, rhythmic breathing cycle. Never breathe explosively or irregularly. Maintain a good level of cardiovascular conditioning. Make sure you have a high quality, personally fitted total diving system. Maintain the system on a regular basis and use that system properly while diving. Ascend slowly, maintain control and be back on the surface with no less than 30 bar or 500 PSI. Help! I need help! Quickly! First aid for overexpansion injuries. Administer oxygen if qualified. Stand by to administer cardiopulmonary resuscitation if qualified. Seek proper medical aid, a recompression chamber as quickly as possible. Whenever a diver surfaces in an unconscious condition or becomes unconscious within six minutes after surfacing, the case must be treated as a possible embolism. The victim must immediately be recompressed and unconsciousness is often the only sign of an injury. If you have a smartphone, download SSI's free app and you will find it contains general medical and personal information to facilitate proper medical treatment. It will also list the diver's relatives to be notified in the case of an emergency. 
the most common reason accidents occur is the lack of proper planning. Never running out of air is as easy as following a simple dive plan. As long as you are monitoring your dive computer and diving within your limits, there should never be any reason for you to run out of air. Note, SSI recommends a safety stop for every dive on 5 meters or 15 feet for 3 to 5 minutes. Have you ever heard of the term decompression sickness? It's the reason your dive computers tell you how deep you can go, how long you can stay, and how fast you can ascend. You need oxygen to sustain life, but nitrogen, the inert gas, serves no real benefit. And nitrogen is the gas that limits our time underwater. As we descend, pressure increases, and so does the air passing through your lungs into the circulatory system and packing nitrogen into the bloodstream and tissues. The bloodstream will become saturated almost immediately, but it takes considerably more time for our tissues to become saturated at depth. As long as you do not exceed that time and you ascend slowly and maintain control, you can come and go as a visitor in this whole new world. What is that amount of time? Not exceeding the no decompression limits. Your SSI dive professional will teach you about the no decompression limits with either a dive computer or dive tables. As stated, nitrogen is the bad gas and will remain in solution as long as the pressure difference does not become too great. It is safe to say that the human body can stand a certain level of too much nitrogen. It is important to note that decompression sickness only occurs when a diver stays at depth too long and surfaces too quickly. The major symptom of decompression sickness is pain. The pain is described as deep, burning, and persistent, mostly in the joints. Other symptoms of decompression sickness include itchy skin rash, primarily in the areas where the skin is thin, visual disturbances, motor paralysis, weakness, loss of manual dexterity, vertigo, numbness, respiratory distress, headache, unconsciousness, loss of memory, and nausea. Treatment for decompression sickness can only be determined by competent medical personnel. In most cases, it will be recompression. The possibility of tissue damage is less if diagnosis and treatment begin as soon as possible. Never take a diver back underwater and attempt recompression. Always have an emergency plan before you dive. List the phone numbers and radio frequencies of the Coast Guard, Lifeguard Service and other useful information in your SSI Total Dive Log and refer to the emergency procedures in SSI's smartphone app. There are many things that can interfere with proper absorption and elimination of nitrogen. Age, alcohol or drug use, extreme heat or cold, old injuries, proneness to blood clotting, obesity, medication, loss of sleep, extreme fatigue, dehydration. To avoid decompression sickness, it is recommended that you wait 24 hours if you plan to fly or even drive above 2,500 meters or 8,000 feet. The next malady related to increasing pressure at depth is nitrogen narcosis. The increasing pressure of nitrogen that produces this effect usually begins at about 30 meters or 100 feet, which means 4 bar or atmosphere's total pressure, or 3.2 bar or atmosphere's partial pressure of nitrogen. The symptoms become more intense as depth increases. Symptoms have been known to occur with inexperienced divers at much shallower depths. The following symptoms of nitrogen narcosis are listed in terms of increasing depths. Lightheadedness, numbness and increasing self-confidence, euphoria. Unusual behavior, loss of dexterity, dizziness, abnormal vision and hearing, inability to reason or follow a dive plan, carelessness about personal safety, short-term memory loss. 
The real danger of nitrogen narcosis is that the onset of symptoms is subtle and the diver may not realize the danger until it is too late. Treatment for nitrogen narcosis is relatively simple. Ascend to a shallower depth. Oxygen toxicity. As we already discussed, we all need oxygen to sustain life. But oxygen breathed under too high of a partial pressure can be poisonous and the reason we do not use pure oxygen underwater. Oxygen toxicity takes place if the partial pressure of oxygen in the breathing mixture approaches 1.6 bar or atmospheres. As a reminder, the air you carry underwater is compressed air. This is the same air you breathe every day that has been cleaned and purified to a high standard. In summary, almost every diving emergency can be traced back to diver error. When diving with a high quality, personally fitted total diving system, it is extremely rare to have an emergency caused by equipment malfunction. In general, all the diving maladies we've discussed can be easily prevented by working with your SSI dive center to select a high quality total diving system and receive thorough training using that system to ensure that you understand all the multiple features that are designed to keep you safe, comfortable and confident. Maintain a level of both short-term and long-term physical fitness. Always dive within your comfort zone, within the limits of your current training and experience. Reasonable depths, slow ascents, and no decompression diving. This section is full of technical information, possible hazards, and emergency and first aid advice. Do not let it overwhelm you. Diving is fun and easy when properly trained and equipped. Basic knowledge of your physiology and the physics of diving will help you develop proper behaviors and replace fears and fantasies with correct information. Being informed will keep you and your buddy out of trouble. Waves are formed primarily by the wind blowing across the water's surface. When the peaks of the water move faster than the lower portion, the top portion breaks off and rolls down the front of the wave and white caps appear. Wave definitions. Height, the vertical distance between the trough and the crest. Trough, the lowest point reached by the wave. Crest the highest point reached by the wave. Length, the horizontal distance between crest and crest, or between trough and trough. Wave series, describes the series or groups in which waves approach the beach. There is a relatively calm period between wave series or sets. Interval, the time it takes for each wave crest to pass a given point. If the interval is short, divers will have little time to rest between waves. Surge, the back and forth motion of waves as they approach the beach. If you use surge to your advantage, you can move without effort across the ocean floor. Allow the surge to carry you in the direction you want to go and maintain your position when the surge is moving in the opposite direction. Experienced divers who use this technique can move considerable distances in heavy surge without expending much energy. Surf. As the bottom section of the wave feels the bottom, it begins to move more slowly than the surface portion, causing the surface portion to build up and break over. In surf, the top part of the wave shears off and moves a wall of water forward. A deep canyon near the shore causes the wave height to drop and results in light surf. A reef just offshore causes the surf to build in height. Currents. Before shore diving at an unfamiliar site, study the water movements and check with lifeguards or a local dive center in the area. 
Rip currents are best observed from a distance above the beach. To identify rip currents from beach level, look for breaks in the surf line caused by outrushing surface water. Rip currents always move away from the beach on a line almost perpendicular to the beach. Rip currents move much faster than a diver or an experienced swimmer can swim. Never attempt to outswim the current. Rip currents only move a few hundred meters from the beach. So, to get out of a rip current, swim parallel to the beach for a few meters. Then use the force of incoming waves to return to the beach. Learning how to use currents to your advantage can provide you with many great diving experiences. To be prepared for all your diving adventures, SSI recommends both the boat diving and waves, tides and currents specialties. A dive buddy helps in all phases of diving and shares the fun. A buddy assists in dive planning, suiting up, pre-dive equipment and safety check, water entry support, assistance throughout the dive, post-dive equipment maintenance, and logging dive information. Diving with a buddy is the only safe way to dive. You should never dive alone. A buddy provides a second total diving system, psychological well-being, and the comfort of someone to assist you underwater. An effective buddy requires practice, communication, and planning. To have a safe and enjoyable dive with another person, you must agree beforehand on the purpose of the dive and how the dive is to be carried out. If one diver wants to do macro photography and the other wants to spear fish, it will be difficult to keep the buddy team together. The buddy team must agree on hand signals, descent technique, maximum depth of the dive, maximum bottom time, minimum cylinder pressure. You should always be back on the surface with at least 30 bar in your cylinder. Compass headings, maximum distance between divers throughout the dive, ascent technique. Lost buddy procedure. If you lose your buddy underwater, turn a complete 360 degrees looking up and down and horizontally. Spend no longer than one minute at depth looking for your buddy before performing a normal ascent. Establish positive buoyancy once on the surface and look for your buddy. Be familiar with your buddy's diving equipment, particularly the placement of his alternate air source, BCD, inflation device, and weight release device. Your dive buddy might be your spouse or a friend or someone who is assigned to you as a buddy by a dive master on a boat. You always have the right to decline diving with someone with whom you do not feel comfortable. Trust your instincts, regardless of who that intended buddy might be. Remember, your safety and comfort in the open water is the most important factor of any dive. Adding additional equipment to the total diving system and being in the best physical and mental condition possible cannot entirely compensate for the increased risk associated with diving alone. The best way to dive is with a buddy. There are many reasons for planning and executing your dives, but the most essential one is to prevent accidents. The best way to prevent accidents and enjoy every dive is with a dive computer. Dive computers are built for today's divers and take into account the way you really dive. A multi-level dive profile automatically tracks bottom time, monitors ascent rates, tracks surface intervals, and logs the number of dives you make in a day and even in a week. Dive computers are fun, easy, and convenient to use. Though diving with a dive computer is the method of choice for most divers today, it is important that you understand the effects single or multiple dives have on your body. This will enable you to plan a dive or a series of dives safely. 
Before we begin to plan dives, we must all speak the same language or use the same terminology. Here are some of the key terms you must know in order to help you understand how to use a dive computer. Depth, total dive time, bottom time, residual nitrogen, surface interval, repetitive dive, no decompression limits, no decompression dive. Dive computers are essential for planning and executing your dives. They record all the pertinent information and help you stay within your no decompression limits. However, there are a few guidelines you should follow. Always have your own dive computer. Do not share a dive computer with your buddy. Check the dive computer's battery life before diving. Adhere to the limits of the dive computer. Make sure all safety warnings are observed. Follow the ascent display or audible warning to stay within the proper ascent rate for the dive computer. Remain within your limits and be conservative. Plan and execute your dive carefully and have a contingency plan if your dive computer fails. When diving from a boat or with any organized group, your dive professional will most likely give a pre-dive briefing. The briefing may include specifics, such as your dive parameters, how long you can stay down, what direction to swim, 35 bar rule, etc. When boat diving, plan your dive and your equipment assembly, donning and adjustment so that you are ready to enter the water when the boat reaches the dive site. On chartered trips, most decisions may be made for you, but it is certainly smart to check with the captain or dive master to determine when to get dressed and put on your equipment. If you are susceptible to seasickness, ask a diving physician for medication and also inform your group leader so that you can enter the water as soon as possible when you reach your destination. By confirming your plan, assembling your equipment, and preparing to dress before arriving at your dive site, you can minimize the time spent on deck once the boat is anchored. For the most part, boat captains will exercise caution in locating an area with relatively calm water. Nevertheless, there are different water conditions in different regions. And those conditions, plus the personal preferences of boat captains, will dictate what entry and exit techniques you use. Pay attention to these during your pre-dive briefing. Make sure your entry area is clear of divers or any other obstacles prior to entering the water, regardless of the entry technique. Your SSI dive professional will show you proper water entry techniques during your pool sessions. After you have entered the water, perform a proper buoyancy check and then descend together with your buddy until you reach your planned dive depth. Stay together during the descent and equalize frequently to avoid problems. Navigation can be done by two methods compass and natural. Underwater is no different. You must be able to either follow a planned set of directions underwater or use the natural resources to navigate underwater. For example, coral heads. Either way, the goal is to avoid long surface swims and make it back to your entry point. We introduced you to the underwater compass in section two as part of your information system. Here is how your compass works. The north seeking needle is a magnetic needle that points to magnetic north. The north seeking needle is your constant reference line. All basic underwater navigation is performed in terms of magnetic north. The lubber line or sight window is the direction you swim. This is used to align the diver's body with the direction of travel. With a sight window, simply align rotating bezel with the witness marks of travel in the window. This will give you your return direction back to the boat or shore. Understanding simple out and back navigation doesn't qualify you as being certified in navigation. 
it's mainly a general understanding of the basic principles. If you want to learn more and become proficient in navigation, ask your SSI dive professional about the SSI navigation specialty. Ascents should be planned. This means you and your buddy have spent one-third of your air supply away from the boat, one-third back to the boat, plus your safety stop, and you are both back on the boat with 35 bar or 500 psi. And to do that, you both need to check your information systems often. Once it's time to make your ascent to your safety stop, remember your cylinder has less air and you have been swimming neutrally buoyant. Don't forget, when pressure decreases, volume increases. Hold your BC exhaust hose in your left hand and check your information system, dive computer, for a nice and slow and controlled ascent. Look up during your ascent for the boat, anchor line, down line or buoy and stay with your buddy. The greatest relative pressure change takes place from 0 to 10 meters or 33 feet. The slower the ascent rate, from the depth to your safety stop, the better. On the surface, inflate your BC for surface flotation. SSI recommends a safety stop for every dive at 5 meters or 15 feet for 3 to 5 minutes. Keep your equipment on until you are safely on deck. The only exceptions to this include removing fins to climb a ladder, removing your weight belt to make you more positively buoyant, and removing equipment and handing it up if instructed to do so by your boat captain. Always choose the safest and easiest entry and exit procedures appropriate to the diving conditions. Take these precautions in case you accidentally slip back into the water. Keep your mask in place so you can see, your regulator or snorkel in place so you can breathe, and your BC inflated so you can float. After you have completed your dive, rinsed your equipment and stored it away for the next dive, it's time to fill out your dive log. SSI believes it's essential to keep an accurate record of your personal information and dives. Sure, your dive computer will do that too, but the dive computer can only track certain things. What makes a dive enjoyable or not is knowing you had the right thermal protection to wear and the right amount of weight needed for a diversity of dives. Because the next time you go diving, you may not remember how much weight you wore with what exposure suit, unless you write it down. Diving is an endless sport of discovery, new dives, and this dive log will become a permanent record of all the wonderful memories you will have in diving. And that is priceless. Your SSI dive professional will go over the total dive log with you and how to fill out and use each page. This will also become a permanent record of your open water certification dives and any other courses you decide to take. Dive operators and resorts will ask you for your total dive log to show proof of the type of diving and experience you have for certain types of diving. Again, a lot more information has been presented in this section about environmental conditions, buddy teamwork, dive planning and execution. So much instruction may seem overwhelming, but by mastering this information, you will quickly become a comfortable and confident diver, ready to safely enjoy many years of wonderful underwater adventures. The surface of this planet is made up of very little land. It is, in fact, about 72% water. More than 85% of the oxygen is produced by marine plants. Even the photosynthesis that takes place on land requires water, which originates in the oceans. 
we are all linked directly or indirectly to the oceans. The oceans are the world's great caretaker. We all need to do our part to keep them clean and free of pollutants. We must leave the oceans in a pristine state if we expect to go on enjoying their natural beauty. For you, the oceans may be your playgrounds. But playgrounds are only fun and exciting if you do your part to keep them clean and well maintained. Corals are colonial animals which construct skeletal structures of limestone, often forming extensive reefs in the shallower tropical seas where sunlight and warmer waters prevail. Coral animals or polyps attach permanently to a surface such as a rock face and slowly build around themselves the protective structures and networks we see as the coral reefs. Some corals can be brittle and some are capable of inflicting abrasions or cuts. These corals are also easily damaged by careless divers who drag equipment, kick corals with their fins, or hit the reefs with their cylinders. To avoid injuring yourself or the coral, always secure your equipment and practice good buoyancy control over reefs. It is also recommended that you keep a safe distance from the reef to avoid damage. It is best to appreciate the reefs with the eyes rather than the hands. Simply touching the corals may remove some of their protective mucus coating, making them susceptible to injury or infections. Unfortunately, there is not enough time in this video to show you this entire planet's estimated 40,000 species of fish that are indigenous to each ocean. If you are particularly interested in marine life or taking pictures, you might want to ask your SSI dive professional about digital photography and marine life identification specialty courses. We are all amazed by the incredible beauty of the underwater world. As you have learned, this is a delicately balanced ecosystem and we only hope you will do your part by protecting this amazing resource. There are three things you can do to protect this amazing resource. Swim neutrally buoyant at all times. Keep your equipment secured to your body. No dangling equipment that may damage the reef. Always be a responsible diver. Though ocean and coastal diving is popular, there are many inland freshwater dive experiences worth investigating. Many divers live too far inland from saltwater sites to be able to dive them exclusively, so they find some very diverse and interesting dive sites nearer to home. Inland dive sites include lakes, rivers, quarries, ponds, and mines, just to mention a few. Your physical well-being is a very important part of diving and often an overlooked component in diving. The more physically fit you are, the more you will enjoy all aspects of your life, including diving. There are some do's and don'ts for divers that are extremely important. For example, alcoholic beverages or drugs and diving do not mix. Always consume adequate liquids, non-alcoholic, when you are diving to prevent dehydration. Water is best. Start your diving day with a good breakfast of light, non-gaseous foods and eat sensibly throughout the diving day. Wear adequate exposure protection. 
over several days of diving and several dives a day, your body temperature will drop. The water you dove in at the beginning of your trip will seem cooler by the end of your vacation. That's why most resident dive masters at tropical resorts wear exposure protection all the time. Divers should refrain from smoking. Moreover, individuals concerned about respiratory health find that smoking is contradictory to diving. Your physical and emotional well-being are important components of your comfort and safety while diving, yet they are often overlooked. To become a diver today, you do not have to be a superhuman. But there are some common sense things you can do to enhance your comfort and confidence in this wonderful sport. One of those things is taking part in a diver stress and rescue specialty program, where you will not only learn how to take care of yourself, but also how to detect and deal with stress and how to assist your buddy in case of an emergency. Using equipment that is unfamiliar, does not fit well, or performs inadequately can create stress, leading to panic. That is why we recommend selecting and owning your equipment and keeping it well maintained by your SSI dive center. Use your pre-dive checklist and check each piece of equipment before every dive. You can eliminate all potential problems by disciplining yourself. Remember, stay within your limits and your capabilities. You always have the right to decline diving if you do not feel comfortable or if you have the feeling that the diving conditions could exceed your abilities. You are capable of helping your buddy in case of an entanglement or sharing air. You are not capable of helping a diver in an advanced panic situation if you are not trained for it. Do all you can without endangering yourself. Prevention of panic. You can easily avoid panic by a proper response. Proper responses must be second nature in difficult situations. Regain control, respond and react. Taking specialty training for the type of diving you are going to do. Most divers who find themselves in a difficult situation admit it was caused by either breaking the rules or doing something they weren't trained for. Honest self-evaluation of your diving limitations. The need to succeed or please someone often drives people beyond their limits. Be honest with yourself. Do not dive if you feel, for any reason, that you should not. Do not let spouse, family, friends, peers, or anyone force you into making a dive that you do not feel comfortable making. You know your capabilities better than anyone else. Remember, diving is meant to be a fun sport. Properly maintaining your total diving system, SSI Equipment Service Program. The main reason to compute air consumption is to figure out how much time can be spent at a specified depth. Once the amount of air to be consumed and your surface air consumption rate are known, it becomes easy to plan a dive. Computing time at depth requires these ingredients. Planned depth, volume of the tank, usable air in bar, SAC rate, the Deep Diving Specialty Program incorporates advanced dive planning, which includes more in-depth information on planning your dive, gas management, and calculating dive times based on various dive parameters and equipment configurations. Ask your SSI dive professional for more information about the Deep Diving Specialty Program. If you follow the rules of scuba diving, you should never find yourself in an out-of-air situation. But if you do, here's an example of the most serious diving emergency, out of air at depth. The primal response if you are out of air at depth is shock and an adrenaline rush caused by the fight or flight response. 
This is where your training takes over. You realize immediately that an uncontrolled, panicked ascent would have serious consequences. Regain your capacity to think and fight off the primal response. Buddy is close enough. Your first choice should be dependent action. Give the out-of-air signal and share air. Buddy is not close enough, but you are in shallow depth. Perform controlled swimming ascent. Buddy is not close enough and you are at depth. Perform emergency buoyant ascent. You must commit the emergency ascent procedures to memory and review them over and over until they become part of your diving behavior. You provide the most important ingredients, maturity, good judgment, and continuing commitment to effective diving technique and safety. Each diver's responsible diving duties include diving within the limits of your ability and training, evaluating the conditions before every dive and making sure they fit your personal capabilities, being familiar with and checking your equipment before and during every dive, respecting the buddy system and its advantages, accepting the responsibility for your own safety on every dive, being environmentally conscious on every dive. After you are certified, you are ready to pursue a lifetime of adventure. Diving offers endless opportunities for exploration, discovery, education, and new experiences. You can go as far as your passion and enthusiasm take you. Entering the underwater world as a trained scuba diver is a thrilling experience. Knowledge puts you in control, and the sport of scuba diving becomes more and more enjoyable with time. Continuing education adds to the enjoyment of the sport and expands your underwater horizons. Your Open Water Diver Certification is only the beginning of the SSI educational system. SSI specialty programs teach you specialized diving activities and there are many specialty programs to choose from. By combining specialties and experience, you can earn SSI continuing educational ratings of specialty, advanced open water and master diver levels. Becoming a dive professional is an extension of the training path. If you have an interest in leading dives, assisting other dive professionals, or making a career out of scuba diving, talk to your SSI dive professional and dive center about the many leadership levels, such as dive guide, dive master, dive control specialist, and even open water instructor. By now, in your training as an open water diver, you have received the fundamentals. You might say, as the Diver Diamond illustrates, that correct knowledge, proficient skills, proper equipment, and diving experience equal enjoyable scuba diving. The rest is up to you. Work with your SSI dive professional. Ask questions and have fun learning and gaining the experience required to become a comfortable, confident diver.